Hello and welcome to the next instalment of our new Wildflower ID series here on the NHSN YouTube channel. Um, over the series, we're looking at different wildflower groups you might encounter whilst out and about in the Northeast. Um, this week, I thought I'd look at a, another omnipresent group of plants found in a whole host of habitats, the ragwort. Let's get started. Now, ragworts get a rather undeserved bad reputation due to the toxicity of some species and the sort of fabled impact of these plants on livestock. This means that they are often much maligned by gardeners, by the general public, but this is perhaps a little unfair. Um, and this is actually quite an interesting group of plants. So yes, ragworts, these are showy members of the daisy family, Asteraceae, typically with vibrant yellow flowers, um, but they differ from certain other groups, including dandelions, by having strap-like petals or rays around the outside of the flower head. Most ragworts are typically herbaceous plants, though there are a few woody examples, and between them they inhabit a really broad range of habitats from grassland and verges to wetland, woodland, and even our city pavements. The good thing about these plants is that they can often be found flowering throughout the year, making them quite a nice group to look at in all seasons, particularly now when little else is flowering. By doing so, you'll probably encounter around five common species, but you may be lucky enough to stumble across a few more too. We'll take a look at most of these in this presentation. So kicking off with our most widespread ragwort species now, um, and we have common ragwort, Jacobia vulgaris. Now, this is the one you're most likely to spot in grassland habitats across our region typically in sunny places, but really it gets absolutely everywhere from lawns to roadsides and field margins. The first thing you'll note with this one are the large clusters of bright gold flowers and leaves which are rather intricately lobed or cut. When looking at these leaves, it is useful to note the terminal lobe at the end of the leaf um, in that this is generally a similar size to the, leaf, to the lobes you see along the side of the leaf. This helps separate it from another species you'll see very soon. If you look behind the flower head at the filary bracts, um, you'll notice that these are green, sometimes with poorly marked black tips, but these tips are seldom striking, um, like some of the other typically urban ragworts we'll see in a bit. These are useful factors when separating this ragwort from others in the family. And here we have just a closer look at those two features. On the left, you'll notice the green filaries lacking dark black markings. On the right, you'll see the leaves of common ragwort showing the terminal lobe right at the end of the leaf, which is almost identical in size to those lateral lobes. And that's really it, um, a nice one to start with. Now we start getting into the interesting ragworts, which could cause you problems when out and about. The first of these is hoary ragwort, Jacobia eruscifolia, which, while common, is never as abundant as the former species. Typically, it inhabits grassy areas on clay soils, but in my experience, it can be found in a whole manner of habitats, including alongside common ragwort, and is one which really shows a preference for derelict land, brownfield, and former industrial plots. Now, this plant has the same yellow flowers as common ragwood, but often has fewer of them. The clusters are generally smaller. It also shares the green bracts we looked at earlier, um, but neither of these factors is especially helpful and appears to play closer attention to the leaves. In hoary ragwort, these often appear far more deeply cut than common ragwort, and the lobes are parallel sided, giving it a rather neat, jagged appearance. Turn the leaves over to inspect the undersides and you'll notice that it sports a dense covering of whitish hairs. Common ragwort may have the odd hair but is by no means hairy um, and it is this feature which gives this species its name of hoary ragwort. 
And just a closer look at these two features now, on the left, you'll see those extremely jagged leaves with their parallel sided lobes. On the right, you can just about see the hairs we talked about on the underside of the leaf. It does help to have a hand lens handy when looking at this, but you should be able to see these with the naked eye. A rather nice one now, perhaps the one I see least of in the local area, particularly here in Tyneside. This rather lovely plant is marsh ragwort. Now, as its name suggests, this plant inhabits damper areas than the former two. This includes wet meadows, marshes, grassy areas along streams and rivers. It is seldom very common, but it is out there. Now, this one is quite easily confused with common ragwort, which interestingly, it also hybridizes with on occasion. But there are a few features that help separate good examples of the two. First up, the flowers and marsh ragwort has fewer stems than the former species and the flowers are displayed in generally smaller clusters. These clusters are also much more open, giving the plant a somewhat more elegant appearance. The most important feature, however, is the leaves, which are less deeply dissected than the former species. Indeed, the basal leaves at the bottom of a plant can actually be entirely unlobed on occasion. Importantly, however, the terminal lobe in marsh ragwort is also noticeably larger than the lateral ones. We'll see a comparison in just a sec. And here we have examples of marsh ragwort to the left and common ragwort to the right. Straight away, you'll notice the large terminal lobe we discussed. If you look at the common ragwort, you'll see these are noticeably smaller and less prominent. But of course, if you find one somewhere in the middle, you might just have the hybrid, but unfortunately that is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. As is often the case with these videos, I thought it would be helpful to display some maps, again, using South Northumberland as an example. Both hoary and marsh ragworts are shown here, and you'll note that both are somewhat scarce, at least if you believe the maps. Um, this might not entirely be accurate. Hoary ragwort, which often occurs in urban or brownfield habitats, shows a strong bias towards the coastal portion of the county, where it is ra rather widespread. Though interestingly, not so much in North Northumberland. Um, conversely, marsh ragwort is rare and scattered, no doubt because it is restricted to areas of suitable habitat or wetlands. So from here on in, we'll be looking at several introduced ragwort species that vary in frequency across the local area. The first of these is shown here, um, the rather aptly named silver ragwort. You can certainly see where it gets its name from looking at the images here. Now, this species has been introduced to the UK from the Mediterranean and is a rather popular garden plant going by several names, including Dusty Miller. This popularity means that the plant often escapes, usually in two distinct habitats, in urban settings where it can be found in pavements and waste ground, and by the coast where it does quite well in sea cliffs and steep remote areas. The good thing about this one is that it lives up to its name and shouldn't cause you any problems. While the intensity of the colour can vary between cultivars of this plant, its leaves are invariably silver. This coupled with the deep, um, <laughs> deep lobes visible here mean you are unlikely to confuse it with anything else. Before moving on, though, I should add that elsewhere in the UK, a hybrid between this and common ragwort is known to occur. Whilst it hasn't yet been spotted in our area, it is on the move and any intermediate plant should be looked at. Um, whilst leading an NHSN trip last year, we encountered a sort of almost perfectly intermediate plant growing between patches of silver and common ragwort. Um, but unfortunately, it wasn't in flower and we weren't able to sort of get any further on the day. And now we get to our most abundant non-native ragwort and a plant familiar from pavements, walls and rocky places right across our region. This is Oxford ragwort, Senecio squalidus, a Mediterranean species first introduced to the UK as a curiosity at Oxford Botanic Garden. 
Often flowering right through the air, it is the ragwort you are perhaps most likely to encounter in our urban spaces. Oxford ragwort typically forms a somewhat sprawling, well-branched plant and usually has very narrow leaf lobes. You can see these here in the images. With this species flowering right through the air, however, it is um, important to look at a more reliable feature. And here it is. Now you'll see here the filary bracts on the reverse of the flower are clearly black tipped. This includes those at the apex of the flower, but also those which extend onto the stem. You'll remember that in common ragwort, these were usually entirely green or only faintly marked with black. And these were by large restricted to the flower head. With the combination of habitat, um, rocky urban habitats, um, as well as narrowly lobed leaves and these bracts, you can be fairly sure you're looking at Oxford ragwort. A really interesting ragwort now, and one which is only just in the process of colonizing the Northeast. This rather attractive plant is narrow-leaved ragwort, Senecio inaquitans, a South African species, which for a while now has been very widespread in southern parts of the country, um, initially import imported alongside wool products, I believe, um, but is now marching north, and like Oxford ragwort, is a real fan of urban habitats. As its name suggests, this is a rather nice one to identify and unique among our local ragworts at least. It has linear leaves which are grass-like and often lacking the lobes of other species. These leaves are mostly untoothed, though this is variable, um, and typically have grey hairy undersides. Like Oxford ragwort, it forms a large, slightly straggly plant, um, branching, and is commonly found in a similar habitat. Looking at the leaves, however, um, in most cases, you'll be able to identify this one straight off the bat. And here's just a closer look at narrow leaved ragwort. You'll notice the bushy habit and narrow grassy leaves. Quite a nice plant, actually, at least I think so. From here, we come on to our final pair of ragworts and two you're unlikely to see in the local area, but it is possible. So they are covered here for posterity. The first of these is the aptly named broadleaved ragwort, um, an introduced garden plant. This is a tall species to some 150 centimetres or more. It is a fan of damp places and has only been recorded a handful of times in the north at Elsdon and Hallington in Northumberland. The nice thing with this species is that it lives up to its name in having broad unlobed leaves, quite unlike any other ragwort you're liable to encounter in the near area. Looking at the image on the left here, you'll note that these leaves um, have distinctive serrated edges, almost like the teeth of a saw. Though you can't quite see them here, apologies, I couldn't find a better picture. Another feature is that the filaries and stems are covered in downy hairs, but really the leaves are all you'll need for this one. If you find it, I'm sure your local county recorders would love to hear more. And last but not least, we have another anomaly and one I guarantee you have seen if you've ever visited a little Aldi or other supermarket in our region. Shrub ragwort is a very common garden and amenity shrub owing to the fact it survives really quite harsh conditions. Um, it can persist as a persistent discard from cultivation or as a survivor from former amenity plantings. Indeed, I've seen this one at several sites locally in Newcastle, where it has spread from historic flower beds in areas of sort of municipal shrubbery. As its name suggests, this plant is somewhat different to others in that it is a woody shrub um, growing to about a metre or more. The flowers are large and impressive, um, but are still typically ragwort-like. The main thing to look out for with this one is its distinctive leaves. These are rounded, densely hairy, and sport a striking white underside. These, coupled with the flowers, will leave you in little doubt that you have encountered shrub ragwort. A nice one to finish on, perhaps. And with that, we're done. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to sharing another one of these videos with you very soon. Until next time.